Could a massive wave of particles from the sun knock out our electrical grid? All this plasma that comes rushing towards us actually interacts with the Earth's magnetic field. And all those energetic particles come rushing in. They can induce currents and end up uh, overloading the system. And when you overload the power grids, it could cause blackouts. Imagine, you wake up to go to work one morning, only to discover that it is not morning yet. What you have mistaken for the sunrise is actually a massive space weather event causing bright auroras. So aurora is the beautiful result of space weather. As those energetic particles from the sun are funneled by, by the Earth's magnetic field down towards our atmosphere, those energetic particles hit nitrogen and oxygen atoms in the atmosphere and they light up. This is exactly what happened to many people, including miners in the Rocky Mountains in 1859 during the Carrington event, the largest geomagnetic storm or major disturbance of the Earth's magnetosphere in recorded history. What happened there is you were able to see the aurora down to Hawaii. Aurora normally is centered on either the North or South Poles. This was a major disturbance in the atmosphere. Even though the miners were not observing the sunrise, this event can be traced back to the sun. A solar flare is when the magnetic fields on the sun reconnect in an absolutely explosive way. Well, when the magnetic field snaps and reconnects, get a huge release of energy. And that release of energy is the solar flare. A solar flare is often accompanied by a coronal mass ejection, or CME. This is what caused the Carrington event. The sun expels billions of tons of charged particles that travel through space. And once they reach Earth, they interact with Earth's magnetic field, compressing Earth's magnetic field. In one way you can think of it as, as when you ring a bell and it vibrates. Well, the CME smacks into Earth and Earth's magnetic field vibrates. The Carrington event of 1859 did cause a disruption in communication due to damaged telegraph lines. But it is nothing compared to the impact an event like that could have today on the modern electrical grid. Basically, uh, the power grid is like an antenna, and we have this current that gets induced in our transmission line. We call it geomagnetically induced current. And it is this induced current that can wreak havoc. In 1989, the Quebec region experienced a geomagnetic storm resulting from a significantly large coronal mass ejection, causing 6 million people to lose power for up to 9 hours. Now, the 1989 blackout was a wake-up call for our industry. The root cause was that between Quebec and the United States, we have long corridors of transmission lines to transfer this huge amount of power between Canada and the United States. You have to support and maintain a healthy voltage across the network. During this geomagnetic disturbance, we lost seven of these devices that are critical to maintain voltage, and we saw a voltage collapse, a blackout. There's truly no other phenomena that can cause such a wide area failure. So slowly but surely, we put all the pieces together and we figure out that the root cause was this geomagnetically induced current. This particular event led engineers and researchers to better understand the harmful impacts of geomagnetic storms on the power grid and prompted them to create new industry standards. The power grid operators have to take certain protective actions to maintain the stability of the grid. It's very much like a chess game. Good chess players can almost visualize moves and counter moves. Well, that's exactly what we do. Every minute we're running thousands upon thousands of what-if scenarios trying to checkmate this geomagnetic disturbance. The power grid isn't the only thing on Earth affected by geomagnetic storms. They can also wreak havoc on GPS technology. You really don't want to land a plane when you don't have GPS. Airlines might reroute based on a threat from space weather. And they can really confuse pigeons. Pigeons get lost. We uh, interact with the pigeon racing community and provide them with details of the geomagnetic activity before they launch their pigeons, because if it's too geomagnetically disturbed, they might not return. For many reasons, it is important to know when space weather might impact Earth. 
and researchers are getting better at being able to predict it. Today, we are where terrestrial weather was about 20 years ago. There's a lot we learned in that evolution of meteorology that we can apply to the evolution of space weather. When we see a solar flare, we have eight minutes um, from the time that that flare happens until that the most energetic particles get here, 12 hours to 18 hours um, for the coronal mass ejection itself to hit. We can put out a watch when we first detect this thing and determine it's earth direct. That gives the utility companies time to get ready for this. We are now entering a new 11-year solar cycle, which means for the next several years, the activity on the sun will increase until we reach what is called solar maximum in 2025. As you approach solar maximum, the probability and likelihood of having more and more CMEs increases. So as we start a new cycle and approach solar maximum again, should we be concerned about the next big geomagnetic storm? Your worry level should be low, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't prepare for it because there's no guarantee that it won't happen tomorrow for power companies, for airlines, for human space flight. Uh, for satellite operators, maybe pigeon racers. You know, they have to keep this in mind. We can say that we understand the problem, we have situational awareness, we have operating procedures, and we continue to engineer the problem out, designing a grid that can withstand a one in a hundred year type of event. We've done our homework, and we're ready to handle the next solar cycle.